Hey there, Improv Tipsters. Welcome back to Improv Tips, where I and some of the best improvisers in the world give you improv tips and advice to make you a better, more confident, and happier improviser wherever you are on your improv journey. I am, as always, your host, Paul Valancourt. Let's begin. I have a fantastic guest tipper for you today, Velvet Wells. Now, I've been a fan of Velvet's on Facebook for some time because I feel like every time something new and different is happening in improv, their name is always attached. From working with puppets in Retired Magical Black Man to another show called All Request Radio where they improvise the, the top 10 songs and using music they've never heard before, amongst many other shows that they do. I feel like they're always there on the cutting edge doing something new and interesting, and I am here for it, as the kids say. But before we get to Velvet's tip, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking the subscribe button and clicking the notification bell so you get the improv tips as they come out. Also, leave us a comment down below and tell me what you think about the channel. If you're enjoying it, if you want to hear some kind of different content, if there's someone in particular that you want to hear an improv tip from or a question that you have that I could possibly answer, leave it in the comment down below or just say hi. That would be great too. All right, now onto Velvet's tip. One of the most common questions I hear from beginning and even intermediate improvisers is, what do I do when I get in my head during a scene? I mean, does that sound familiar? It's happened to you? It's happened to me, I know for sure. Uh, it, it's so important that I made some of my earliest improv tips, this one, ding, ding, and this one, ding, ding, about just that idea because I wanted to help people out because it's such a big, a big problem or a big situation that people face. Um, today, Velvet brings us a real, a really great actionable technique for dealing with this all too common improv malady. Um, but I, I don't want to tell you about it. I want them to tell you about it. So without any further ado, please sit back. Relax and enjoy. Velvet Wells. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, I do have a tip right off the top of my head. It is one that I use when I'm feeling in the moment, when I'm feeling not in the moment, when I'm suddenly in my head. And that is giving yourself a back pocket game. And by back pocket, uh, often when we're instructed to give a back pocket piece of information, sometimes it's a, a piece of character, a history, or a secret. Or I like to have a game. I like to have a built-in structure that I can play with myself. I'm not doing it to impose on anybody else. I'm doing it to get myself out of my head and back into the moment. What I find by playing these games uh, I get so wrapped up in the how does this game go? Am I following the rules of this game that I forget all of the other overthinking that that is happening and I re-engage with my partner with the moment. An example of a game that I like to play is touch to talk. Now, I don't actually like this as a game between partners unless you're in a group and know each other fairly well and you've figured out the consent boundaries and all of that. But to play with strangers, I tend not to. But with myself, I can certainly wait to talk until I have touched a new part of my body, uh, keeping it pg obviously, but uh, but it allows me to, uh, again, to get out of my head about, uh, you know, anything that isn't present with my partner at the time. And it adds some flavor to how my character moves. Now that I know that I do this moment, what was it that triggered that moment? May not have had an emotional context before, but now I, I can create one. Oh, I, I felt that way when my partner said something that was shocking to me. Maybe now this is my, my go-to defensive move when I feel something is a little too much. Maybe it's this when I'm trying to come up with in character, trying to come up with a way to help them through it. Maybe it's hey. this when I realize that I have something really exciting and want to share a new development, a new way of looking at the world, again, through the character's eyes. I'm not pre-planning any of these motions. I'm letting the kinesthetic take over in that moment. Just go, all I know, all I know is that the rule is you can't talk until you have touched a body part, in a, a new body part. So I give myself that. And I will say with not just that game, but almost every game that I have as a back pocket game, I get maybe three steps in and then I, I've forgotten that I'm playing that game or it has become so embedded in and so entrenched in how that character moves that I don't need to even reference it again. It just it is a part of me. 
Another one that I like are word limitations. And this can be the number of words that you play, or it can be uh, limiting what letters you are allowed or not allowed. You could have an alliteration uh, algorithm. <laughs> A okay. Uh, you could you could have you could set it up so that you always say uh, you know three letter A words in a row and then you move on, or or you are going to try not to say letter A words. Uh, there's a game called No P uh, that follows that second example. Or it could be that you know you're going to give yourself bursts of language. So it may be you're going to speak in five word sentences until you have built up enough emotional momentum and then it's going to be 10. And then you're quiet again and go back to the five, five, 10, whatever that pattern happens to be. It's totally for yourself. And again, it's in the moment. The idea is that it's supposed to like make that overthink, go into more overthink so that they cancel each other out. It's just math. It's, it's word brain math. Uh, and another example of those word limitations are the alphabet game. I love the alphabet game. I can play it backward and forward. I play it in my sleep. Uh, I love the alphabet game. Uh, so to give yourself that limitation of the next sentence you say, whatever it happens to be, it will be justified. It will make sense in the scene, but it will start with the next consecutive letter of the alphabet. Uh, and if you make it far enough, you can wrap around. But again, I tend to go th three, maybe four, maybe five, if I'm really jazzed on it. Uh, and these are not meant for your partner. It's okay if it's completely invisible. If nobody even in the audience has picked the, up that you are doing these things for yourself. It is all just a shortcut that overthinking. Back pocket games. Uh, I, you know, there's another one that is um, that you need to balance the stage. And uh, just like sit, stand, bend, or any of those variations where you're moving and justifying. You can do that for yourself. Uh, so that gives me, as somebody who is very verbal, it gives me an opportunity to go, hey, I don't know what to think right now. Well, as much as thinking is my jam, how about I act and react in a physical way? That I seek more space for my partner or I seek more proximity to them. Uh, and that reminds me of, of one final one, which is uh, I don't share it with others, but I realize I just do it in life. And that is uh, mirroring or matching, mirroring and matching your partner, that taking on the same physicality, the same energy that they have, the same emotion that they have, speaking with the same pattern, uh, whether it's rapid or slow. Or, or if they're nervous, or if they're very direct, by mirroring and matching them, if you're finding yourself a little out of sync, that is a wonderful way, even if it's just in that moment, to get back in together and discover again what the scene is about and, and how to have fun with each other. I hope that you enjoyed these little uh, back pocket games. Again, they are, uh, if they're useful, amazing. And as soon as they're not, let them go. Let them go. Get back onto the stage. Get back into the scene with your partner. That is where the fun is. Thanks again. Hey friends, thanks for checking out the video. And uh, if you wanna hear a little bit more, check out one of these two quality videos. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and follow us on social media. All the links are in the description down below. And let me know what you would like to see an improv tip about. Thanks for watching.